Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. I know there are no knives in front of you and that's because we're gonna do something just a little bit different this time. Uh, normally with these most carried videos, I talk about the stuff that's been in my pocket most often, my most carried, okay? Um, and this one will cover from, you know, about mid-February to mid-April, so about six weeks there. And uh, what I thought I'd do this time was change it up just a little and include the stuff that I regularly have in my EDC bag. This changes out a little bit, but it's much less frequent. So my knife habits, they change as I've, as I've indicated before about every month to six weeks. My EDC bag pretty much stays the same for much longer periods of time, but I did want to include it this time because we haven't done it in a while and it allows me to talk about some stuff that I think is important. So what, do I be, what have I been carrying with me on a regular basis? The first thought, thing I thought I'd talk about are some tools and then some first aid stuff and then finally we'll get into the knives. So uh, in terms of tools, I always have a multi-tool in there. This is the one that's in there most often. I also have a bit kit with my EDC bag. By the way, if you guys want to make recommendations, I'm kind of looking for a new laptop bag right now that can that also serves as an EDC bag. So it can't be massively huge, but it does need to hold a full size laptop. Uh, and it needs to be very durable and have lots and lots of pockets because I like to designate like this is the first aid pocket, this is the you know knife pocket, this is the tool pocket, whatever. Uh, I don't like to mix that stuff, <laughs> okay? So if you uh, wanna make recommendations down below, I'd love to hear that. Uh, maybe you'd also just like to make recommendations of something that, hey, if Kevin tries this, maybe he could do a review of it and I'd be interested to see that. So. Uh, all of those things, I'd love to hear your comments down below. And also, do you carry an EDC bag or is it just whatever you've got in your pockets? So now that we've got all that out of the way, let me quickly start going over some of this stuff. So the one thing I do carry is this RAV Power Power Pack. It's a little big and a little heavy. This was chosen very specifically. This will charge my phone, my wife's phone, and my two children's tablets. And it will actually charge three of them at the same time which means on long trips, it's really, really useful. And I can get, uh, if I charge all four of those things, I can still get like one more cell phone charge out of it or one more tablet charge out of it. And so it, it turns out to be something really, really handy. If you're traveling on the road, if you're going on a camping trip, lots of different places, I have found this invaluable. And not only myself, but I've been with someone before where they were like, oh no, I had to make an important phone call and my phone's dead. And I quickly pulled out the, uh, the good old power bank and was able to give them a hand. So super useful thing to have. And not only is it, you know, a... Uh, what would you say? Not only is it a convenience, but there's actually a safety element here too, because there are some situations you really don't want to get into with uh, a phone that isn't charged. So that's uh, that's first. I've also been carrying this WowTac flashlight. Now I changed this out. Uh, the other flashlight that I exchange it with is this guy. This is the M2R Warrior. There is a new M2R Warrior. I've been carrying this one a little more than this one lately because I'm getting ready to do my review on that. So keep on the lookout for it. Uh, and by the way, I have been loving this flashlight. It is really, really cool. Uh, definitely has a, a more appealing sort of visual look than this guy does. Although, anyway, I'm not going to say anymore. That's for the review. Uh, so... I'll switch these out. I've been carrying this one a little more lately because I am want I'm wanting to be ready to review it in the next week or so. Uh, and uh, an EDC flashlight. I mean, I figure since I've got a bag anyway, it's worthwhile to carry something a little bigger and a little more powerful. By the way, I will put links to this stuff uh, down below uh, to amazon.ca or amazon.com. Uh, obviously click on the one that make, matches the country you're gonna be buying from. Uh, so. The other one I've been carrying is the WowTac Black Scout Survival Flashlight. And uh, this was on sale because there was a new one coming out. So got it for a decent price and I've been actually pretty happy with it. I wanted to be able to, you know, flashlights to me are kind of an extra item and I don't feel as compelled to spend money on them, okay? So I'm much more drawn to the value budget price flashlights. And, and so I wanna emphasize that if I am gonna review flashlights, they're likely gonna be on the cheaper end of the scale. This one, I just, I love the look of it so much and I like Olight so much that I wanted to try it. So this is a bit of an exception for me. This is more the norm. Anyway, let's move those out of the way. But just to say in my EDC bag, I do carry, um, a flashlight and a multi-tool. By the way, I think all of this stuff is, is available from Amazon. The other thing that I always carry in my EDC bag is the Weha Bit Kit. And the reason I carry it 
uh, is because look how slim it is. All right, so I can just drop this in one of the pockets. It doesn't take up a lot of space and I'm good to go fixing my knives. Or the other thing that's funny is because people know I'm into knives, every time I go somewhere, people are like, hey, my knife is doing this or it won't lock upright or the blade's moving or what do I do? Can, and the other thing they'll say is, do you have a sharpener with you? Can you sharpen it? And I usually do have the sharp maker. I don't have it here, but I often keep the sharp maker in my EDC bag as well. Um, I always have a strop in there, so I will do that instead if I can't uh, sharpen it for them. So there you go. Uh, those are some of the tools that I carry with me every day in my EDC bag. A couple other quick things that are in there. Some medical gloves, uh, a bandana. I carry a couple of these. I'm thinking for a number of different reasons, they're useful bandaging to wear. Uh, my kids will use them for all kinds of different things. Even if you're just going to care, you know, I've had it before where, you know, just carrying a bunch of apples and you fold this out, put the apples in and make a little bag out of it. So just a useful thing to have. Primarily, I think of this as a potential Band-Aid. Okay. By the way, if you're going to do that, this is there. They sell these at dollar stores and all over the place really cheap. Throw it in the wash first. Okay. Who knows what those things are packed in when they're made in China and you don't want to put that on someone who's bleeding. It's even questionable to put it on because it's not technically uh, sanitized really, you know, really well. Um, but if someone's bleeding out, you know, they can, they can give them some antibiotics when they get to the hospital, if the blood's still in them and you've been able to keep it in. Uh, of course, medical gloves, because if you're going to go touching somebody, uh, <clears throat> Band-Aids. And let me say this, guys, when we're talking about, you know, the kind of first aid stuff that you're likely to encounter as an average citizen, and even as a first responder, honestly, the, the vast majority of things that we respond to are going to involve uh, only a couple of simple things. Number one, uh, you may have to stop some bleeding from a severe wound. Number two, you may have to stabilize some body parts. If you've got a broken leg or a broken arm, uh, you know, neck or back injury, just get that stabilized so that it's not moving around all over the place. Even if you don't have, you know, a full on head collar the way we do, you can stabilize with blankets or, or all kinds of things that are just going to keep that person um, immobilized to the greatest, to the best of your ability. And then of course, CPR and uh, maybe rescue breathing. So if you're prepared to do those kinds of fairly basic things, that goes a long way. The other thing that's worthwhile is knowing how to operate a defib. A lot of places now, malls and hockey rinks and churches and all kinds of public places have a one of the little Mikey defibrillators and it's worthwhile. You can even go online. I'm going to see, I'll try to link in the description box below uh, a video to how those work. Uh, by the way, there is uh, some zip ties as well. I always carry those in my bag. Uh, <clears throat> So let's get to the knives. And yeah, I will put a link down in the description or at least try to an instructional video on how to work um, one of those Mikey defib paddles. All right, starting off with the knives, we have the very awesome Benchmade Crooked River with those absolutely amazing carbon fiber scales from Rogue Bladeworks. And I do have a little update. I have, uh, I should be within the next couple of days uh, being able to order a new backspacer for this guy. So uh, I'm debating on colors right now. You know, they'll, they'll have, I think, a couple of different G10 colors as well as the carbon fiber that will match with the scales. Um, you know, I'm imagining like blue, black, gray, that kind of stuff. If you have an opinion on that, I'd love to hear it. Let me know what color you think would look good in the backspacer there. But this is a knife that I carry a lot. I just love, you know, it's it carries really nice because it's fairly slim. Uh, and yet you've got this very big, very useful knife with you. So I do, this guy gets a lot of pocket time. And I think you guys can see why that is. This is a very popular Benchmade. Definitely my favorite one. Uh, what else have we got here? Let's go something a little budgety. Uh, Rat Model 1. Again, this knife gets a lot of pocket time. Um, <clears throat> whenever I'm doing anything that I don't want to carry a more expensive knife, uh, I'll carry this. Uh, or if I think, you know, if I'm sitting on the couch and I'm bored, this knife flips, I mean, flicks really well. The action is so smooth. And so if I just want a knife that I can kind of fool around with on the couch, uh, you know, I can, I'll get this out. And uh, it is just so nice that uh, it's really, really enjoyable to kind of flip and use. And of course, the other reason this knife gets brought out a lot for comparisons because everyone's so familiar with it. So lots of reasons that guy ends up in the pocket. Uh, the next knife, this guy, you know, I love this knife and, it, and it's so nice that I often feel like oh, I'll just leave it on the shelf and let it look pretty. 
uh, but from time to time, I sort of get in the mood. In the last few weeks, I've been carrying this a lot. I guess I'm in one of those larger knife moods. I've been carrying this and the Crooked River and the F3 and a few other large knives uh, a little more frequently these days. Um, <clears throat> I can't really explain why. It's just my preference right now. And, you know, this is such a beautiful, beautiful knife. Truly a piece of functional art. Um, and I'm so happy that, you know, when, when it was announced that the Steelcraft series would have a full-size bodega, I was like, just so stoked about it. And I have not been disappointed one bit. What a fantastic knife. Uh, let's see, we'll stick with that large theme and I guess the expensive theme too. Uh, Curtis F3, this always, this makes it into tons of these videos because I just love this knife. It is, you know... It's almost as if, you know, Dave just reached into my brain and pulled out all of my preferences and made a knife to perfectly suit me. I really, really like this knife. <clears throat> and for that reason, it gets carried all the time. Even on days I don't carry it, I usually go to, you know, sort of the, the knife wall where I have my, um, I, I have sort of a frame that I built with racks on it that I can stick, set, set my knives on and I'll go over and, and flip it a little bit. What a, what a fantastic blade. Um, by the way, I've heard a couple of you comment, this is the next guy on the list, but before, I've heard a couple of you comment that he's not doing the knife of the day stuff anymore with as much frequency. That's too bad. They are very expensive knives, I know that. Um, you know, give it a lot of thought and time. If you, this, this knife or any knife in that price range is only something you should buy if you're just, if you just know it's gonna be beyond amazing, okay? So, <clears throat> That's a knife I recommend, you know, trying out first. Um, anyway, let's see, what do we got here? Cold Steel 4MAX. Again, uh, sticking with the large theme, I love this knife. And, you know, every time I, you know, I'm, I'm actually thinking about doing this. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But I'm thinking about making this like a standard knife in all of my videos. So every knife video, I'll throw this guy in as a comparison just to kind of throw a wrench in the whole works of, of how the video is going. Uh, hopefully it doesn't throw anyone off because it's so big that some people might be like, whoa, that whatever knife I'm reviewing now seems really small when it could be a, a huge knife and just this is that much huger. Anyway, uh, love the Formax. It is, the thing I love about it is they've really, one, it really is the most definitive hard use heavy duty folder out there. The the other option I guess would be the SR1 from Cold Steel, the folder. Uh, but they've given you a knife that's just a tank of a knife, a true real beast to borrow from ZT, but it still cuts stuff really well. It's still comfortable in hand and it even is not that horrible to carry. All right, what else have we got? Oh yeah, the 0393, fantastic knife. Absolutely ZT's best knife for this year and perhaps their best knife ever. Uh, this gets a lot of carry times. It's just so well done and so well balanced. I like the blade. I love the ergonomics. Uh, the review should be coming up anytime. I'm not sure if this video will post first or the review will, but uh, what a fantastic knife. Uh, let's see. I won't say much about it just because that review is coming up anytime now. Para 3, um, <clears throat> wow, did I say Para 3? Let's try Para 2. I don't know, I think it's because the 393 kind of stuck in my brain there. Anyway, Para 2 is a knife that always gets pocket time. I carry it uh, just, you know, <laughs> a, a lot. And, and the, this, is, the, this knife has been in so many of these videos. I love this version, the S35VN Para with the brown handle. Uh, this was one of the early sprint runs and it was one of the knives that was popular. When I first started getting into knives, um, started learning about the Para 2, a bunch of people had done videos on this exciting sprint run. And so I think it just connect, you know, it got kind of set in my brain as that's the great sprint run. And uh, of course I love S35VN and Spyderco does a great job with it. Now, let me say this one comment. S35VN is a great steel. I have no complaints about it, but sometimes it's finished a little soft. It's heat treated a little soft. Not so with this knife. Spyderco has done about the best job I've seen anyone do of uh, S35VN. Uh, I got a couple more for you. The first one is going to be the Warrencliffe. I'm, uh, this show, this video should post on Wednesday, so this will be my Warrencliffe Wednesday uh, nod in this video. <clears throat> Again, uh, I you know I've had I think this is like my fifth XM18, uh, and maybe it's my fourth. I don't know. 
but I love it. This, you know, I've sold all the others and this one is just never gonna go anywhere. I absolutely adore this knife. It just, it feels so good in hand. The handle, the blade is, you know, heavy duty, but still thin enough to cut stuff. I, you know, I really, really love this blade. Uh, and uh, I don't know. What do you guys think of the new lock bar insert that they're doing on the fifth gen? This is a, a fourth gen. Um, and look, the lockup is super early and I've had this knife for years, okay? So I, I definitely don't see the need for uh, the stainless steel lock bar insert on, on this knife or any knife that's gonna be done right. Here's my concern. I'm afraid that Hinderer is, has done it because it makes life a little easier. So they're, it, you know, it's kind of a cheat for them so that they don't have to get their, their geometry as precise. Uh, last but not least is the very awesome Rake Knives 815. This is pretty well still my favorite fixed blade to carry. It's just thin and light, it's tough. You know, I love the Bark River fixed blades that I have, but the, the sheaths tend to be a little big and bulky. Uh, this sheath made by <clears throat> the Real Bush Monkey is so, so good. Definitely give him a follow on Instagram. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I just, I enjoy it. I carry it just in my pocket like this, in my back pocket or side pocket. It's slim, it's light, just fantastic. So there you go, guys. That's what's been in my pocket the most the last little while. I'm not gonna be able to get everything back in here. And if there is anything you're really interested in, especially the flashlights and the tools from the start, I will put links to where you can pick these up on amazon.com or .ca uh, down in the description box below. Thanks for watching and we will talk to you soon.